agreed to. I call the member for Lawler. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, this bill amends the Private Health Insurance Act 2007 to pause the income thresholds that determine the tiers for the Medicare levy surcharge and the rebate on private health insurance at 2014-15 rates for three years. De Madam Deputy Speaker, nothing is more important to most people than high quality health care. And in the spirit of that, Labor will support the savings measure in this amendment, but it is worth pointing out a few things in this debate and getting them on the record in this place. So I want to canvas a few ideas, a little about the history of the Private Health Insurance Act, like many that have um, spoken before me, what this bill, when matched with this government's budget, says about this government's understanding of health care, its attitude to health care and its priorities when it comes to health care, and um, some issues around where the savings will be spent. And there is some, some irony in the histories, as we've heard um, from the member from Wakefield. The Medicare levy surcharge, of course, the private health insurance rebate and the lifetime health cover measures were introduced by the Howard government in the mid-1990s. And, um, and it was purported that they were introduced to stem the decline in private health insurance membership. And I well remember uh, that um, legislation uh, being brought into the House because I have vivid memories of the scare campaign that was run through the television screens around Australia. I remember watching those advertisements in my lounge room, the punitive nature of the advertising campaign that was scaring me at the time I was a single mother with three small children working part-time as a teacher, uh, balancing the budget, paying off a mortgage. Um, my children were not spoiled because they couldn't afford to be spoiled. And I remember having nightmares, nightmares about whether or not I could afford private health insurance. It was a, um, a moment I well remember. So these measures were put in place to encourage the take-up of private health insurance with the argument to reduce pressure on the public health system. Then when the previous Labor government made changes to the threshold to this act and introduced the means testing, we saw another scare campaign. This time, the then opposition opposed the measure and on the grounds that people would drop private health care cover. This, of course, did not eventuate. Indeed, the current level of private cover is the highest we've seen. Contrary to that campaign or that scare campaign, health insurance is healthy and growing. So that's one of the ironies, I suppose, that we stand here um, to support this bill and will not go into the scare campaign on it. Another is that this government of course, he's now doing exactly what it said would lead to people pulling out of private health insurance. And let's face it, this is a small save when compared to other cuts in the, to the health in the budget. But the sweetest irony in the area of health is a little more complex. We hear the minister saying how important the sustainability of healthcare is to him and to the country. He does this while he introduces the GP tax, claimed to be modest and yet in many um, households around the country, it will not be modest. The introduction of that tax that will also um, put, um, raise out-of-pocket expenses, front-up expenses on diagnostics, an increase in the cost of medicines, changes to the PBS safety net, cuts to various preventative health programs, and I think this is the most ironic, of course, because we're talking about savings measures uh, to prolong, to, to make health care uh, less expensive for the government and we cut preventative health measures, particularly when we have the challenges like obesity and diabetes. Cuts to dental programs have been canvassed, um, certainly by the member for Wakefield. We've got the closing of the Medicare locals, only to be, they'll all be closed and then be reopened, rebadged. Uh, to the cost of $200 million we're getting reports of. The worst, though, of course, is the dismantling of bulk billing incentives and the $50 billion cuts to hospitals. And what's the justification used for these cuts? It was a budget emergency, that health spending was out of control. So we had a lot of fear-mongering around that, around the health spending being out of control, that 
health was going to overtake everything else in the budget. But of course, that has been summarily dismissed of late, with the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare last month reporting that growth in health spending was actually at its lowest level in decades. In fact, the Australian Medical Association President Associate Professor Brian Allen, and I note today in question time that the Prime Minister said that he had a lot of respect for the AMA, said the figures in the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare's report, and I'm quoting now, really make a mockery of the government's claim that healthcare spending is out of control. Professor Aller went on. He said that these figures actually show that healthcare spending is certainly not out of control and there is absolutely no need for them to introduce a GP co-payment. So the premise for the savings across the health budget are being challenged. The facts are that health spending by the federal government fell in 2012 to 13 2.4 per cent in real terms. State health spending fell by 1.5 per cent. And all of this backed up against the fact that private spending on health, of course, for Mr and Mrs Average, went up by 6.9 per cent with an increase in private health insurance. And Ross Gittins last week wrote something interesting as well. He said that actually the real fall in federal spending seems to be largely the product of savings measures taken by the previous government, particularly its tightening of rules for the private health insurance rebate, which the coalition fought so hard to stop happening. So the last government, the Labor government, made real savings, opposed by those opposite, in fact demonised by those opposite with stories of the sky falling in and people dropping out of private health insurance, all, of course, we find now not to be the case and that the savings were made by the previous government. So Labor on, will support these savings measures as we, as we introduced the means test to bring a savings measure into the health budget. But there is a danger here, perhaps an unforeseen one, perhaps with this government's apparent loathing for modelling, that we haven't seen any of the risk in this assessed. Because perhaps the measure introduced by Labor that the then opposition thought would bring down the sky and instead saw the highest rates of private health insurance ever might have a negative impact this time. As I alluded to earlier, I well remember the scare campaign. I well remember the campaign to get Australians to take out private health insurance, and I well remember it because I wasn't in a position to take that option up. And I well remember the sleepless nights I had and the fear I lived with because I couldn't make that choice. And I'm concerned that when combined to the other cuts to families in this budget, other families may now find themselves in that space. And perhaps when it's combined with the 6.9 per cent rise in premiums that the minister approved since coming to office, it will in fact have that effect. We will see in the course of time. Madam Deputy Speaker, Labor supports sensible health savings and supports savings going back in the system for further improvements, like preventative health measures, something it seems this government has little regard for. But we do question the savings then being directed to the Medical Research Future Fund. And we do this on a few grounds, mostly because of the lack of detail around this fund. There's been no information about its establishment. The federal and state health departments have not been involved. The chief scientist not consulted. There's been no dialogue with the health and medical research sector before it was introduced on the night of the budget. So we have some concerns about making savings supposedly for a budget emergency, but then rather than putting them back in to cover some of the cuts that are carried through on the budget, they're to be put to research fund with very little detail around it. And it all for me reaffirms that those opposite know the price of everything, but very little about the value. Of course, on this side, Labor has a record in heavily investing in health and medical research, a total of $3.5 billion since 2008. And that, this funding supported 
8,500 researchers working to improve Australia's health at over 80 institutions, including hospitals, medical research institutes and universities. Through its Health and Hospitals Fund, LAPA also invested $700 million to build and upgrade medical research facilities across the nation. Labor also knows the value of embedding health and medical research into all aspects of the health system, not separately, not sitting outside, but building it in, because health services conducting research deliver better health outcomes for patients. Deputy, Madam Deputy Speaker, the cuts this government are making in health are all based on ideology. It seems keen to dismantle Medicare and create what they don't like to hear, but what will in fact be a two-tier American-style health system. One tier that can pay and have access to the benefits of medical research, where your access to health provision is determined by your wallet. Labor believes everyone should have universal access to high-quality health care. And of course, Medicare was established to do that. It's a legacy of the vision of the former Prime Minister Gough Whitlam. That was, of course, when we do the history lessons again, dismantled by Prime Minister Fraser and then reintroduced by Prime Minister Hawke. And Labor will continue to stand up for Medicare and for universal health care. So although we support this savings measure, I do have some concerns about what the combined impacts of those things might be. And I think it's worth um, standing here as the member for Lawler and raising those issues because, of course, there will be many families in my electorate who will be having to make clear decisions about whether they will be able to continue to afford private health cover given some of the other measures contained in the budget if and when they get through. So Labor will support the savings measure but would prefer to see the savings redirected to the health sector to minimise the impact of the other cuts across the health sector that were contained in their budget. Thank you, Madam Speaker.